Yes. Ms. Hadley is here today after failing to appear before this court on July 12th, 2023. Bond is currently set at $500. This is the second bench warrant. She reports no employment. Last payment made on this account was on July 7th of 2023. That was a $100 bond forfeiture. Front of the court recommends that a reasonable bond be set on this matter and it be scheduled for hearing on August 23rd, 2023 at 8 o'clock a.m. before this court. Ms. Hadley, uh, you're before the court charged with civil contempt of court due to your failure to appear at a prior hearing as a result of your failure to pay child support. The purpose of this hearing is to set a bond that would assure your attendance at the next hearing on August 23rd, 2023 at 8 o'clock a.m. You will get notice of that in writing. Are you able to post a bond? Um, I don't know. To be honest with you, I have a second. Um, sorry, I just woke up. I have a second interview on Friday um, for GDI facility services. But as of right now, I'm not working. Okay. Uh, I didn't ask you that. I asked if you were able to post a bond. Do you have funds to post a bond? No. Okay. Well, the court will note that, uh, again, that previously uh, you had a, a bond that was forfeited in this matter. You didn't appear for a hearing uh, previously before the referee. Uh, the court had given you a favorable bond at that point. What I'm going to do is I am going to reduce your bond because it is your second uh, bench warrant in hopes that you're able to uh, post it, I'm going to put your bond in the amount of $200. If you're able to post that, you'd be able to be released. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay, thank you. The court will end this matter at 8.37 a.m. Good morning uh, to both of you. Uh, I'll start with you, Ms. Baker. This is a settlement conference. I do note I had uh, received notice that uh, you had settled matters prior to the uh, settlement or prior to mediation. Uh, you were told on the uh, July 12th date to prepare the final orders, uh, submit those to the uh, friend of the court for approval. Where are you at in submitting the uh, final judgment and orders to the front of the court, ma'am? I did that on Monday. Okay. Did you submit a judgment, a uniform child support order, and a judgment information form? Yes, I did. Okay. Any, just any reason why it took a month to do that? No, I was having trouble because I, I haven't had any legal counsel, and I didn't know friend of the court was an actual place um, in the courthouse, so I was trying to find these forms on the Michigan legal help and it wasn't getting anywhere. And so I got frustrated and I just didn't, didn't do it until I went down to the court, to the clerk's office. And then they told me friend of the court was a place in the courthouse. And so I went down there and the lady at the front helped me. Okay. Yeah. Well, it's going to take us probably a couple of weeks to, uh, get, uh, Front of the court approval. Uh, did we do proofs in this? I'm gonna. I'm checking that right now. Okay, ma'am. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna take some uh, proof from you, uh, which we have to do. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is have you raise your right hand, be sworn in, then we'll ask you some questions. Okay, ma'am. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give shall be the whole truth and nothing but the truth? I do. Okay. Ma'am, in this matter, uh, you filed a, a complaint seeking a divorce from the defendant. And uh, at the time that you uh, filed that complaint on or about March 14, 2022, had you been a resident of the state of Michigan and the county of Calhoun for the uh, 180 days immediately preceding the filing of the complaint. Yes, I have been. At the time you filed the complaint, were all of the allegations true in the complaint? Yes, they were. And do they remain true? Yes. You state as well that there has been a breakdown of the marital relationship to the extent the object of matrimony had been destroyed 
and there remains no reasonable likelihood that the marriage can be preserved. Is that a correct statement? Yes, it is. Do you believe that there's any chance at reconciliation with the uh, defendant? No, I do not. Okay. Ma'am, are you currently pregnant? I am currently pregnant, yes. Okay. Well, that does present a problem for us. Uh, I can't complete the action uh, until such time as we have had a, uh, have that uh, particular child excluded in this matter. You're not going to be able to get a a paternity test and all of that until after the child's born. I don't need a paternity test. Why is that? Because I have slept with Brett Baker in over a year. He is not the father of this baby. Okay. Well, we're still going to, what you're going to have to do, ma'am, is in this uh, particular case, you're going to have to file a subsequent motion to have the child determined not to be issue of this marriage and to be a child born out of wedlock. So you're going to have to file some additional paperwork. We will then have to have a separate hearing and we'll have to take some testimony at that time uh, to, in fact, exclude the child. So what is what is that paperwork? Um, you'll, you'll, fi you'll file a motion to have a child determined not to be issue of the marriage, to be a child born out of wedlock, and then... What I'll do is because of what you've stated today, I don't need to have a motion hearing. Once you file that motion, I'll have you contact my office and we will schedule it for a Wednesday afternoon hearing. It's at 1.30 on Wednesday. And uh, then we will take some testimony at that particular time. Is the biological father willing to come in and acknowledge paternity? Yes, he is. Okay. Then we what we do is we'd have him come in and testify as well. Uh, so we take testimony from you. We take testimony from him. Maybe testimony from uh, Mr. Baker, and uh, confirm all of that on the record. And then we'd be able to enter an order again, determining that the child is not. Uh, issue of the marriage is a child born out of wedlock and then we'll be able to proceed so would that be like an in-person court date court hearing no we we'll, we'll, we'll do it we'll just like we're doing it here we'll do it all over soon okay but we'll have we'll have the uh if you would make you're going to have to file that motion and again, it's, if you're using michiganlegalhelp.org, they have the you know the forms there. Okay. And so you'll have to prepare the motion, and then you'll have to prepare an order from the motion so that you can submit that order with it, and then we'd be able to enter that order after we take testimony. Okay. And then when you file that, also provide copy to Mr. Baker so that he has it. He knows the date when that hearing will be, and then we'll take some testimony from him as well. Okay, and then so the divorce is not going to move forward until we do this, right? It and then not, it is not going to be move forward until this is completed. Okay, and this this can be set up quickly. We can get this within done. within a couple of weeks. Yes. Okay. Okay, so the sooner I file this, the sooner we get this moving. The sooner you file it, the sooner we can get a hearing and the sooner we can get it completed. Okay. So it's up to you just to, they have all the forms on michiganlegalhelp.org. So you just go in there, most of them are check the box and then fill in some blanks and then yeah. we'll, be able to, uh, we'll be able to get it completed. Okay. Okay. Thank you both. Uh, court will end this matter at 8. 57 a.m. The court will find, at least as it relates to the proofs you presented, that again, the statutory basis has been established. There has been a showing there's been a breakdown of the marital relationship. We'll simply preserve the proofs at this matter at this time, pending 
the uh, determination that the child is a child born out of wedlock. So we will then see you back on a Wednesday. We'll Good morning uh, to both of you. Uh, court will note that this matter was re-noticed from uh, July 12, 2023. At that time, plaintiff was informed to prepare the uh, final orders, submit them to the front of the court for approval. Uh, have you done that, sir? Yes. Okay. And have you heard anything back from the front of the court? No. Okay. When when did you submit those? Uh, about a uh, a week and a half ago. Okay. It usually takes about two weeks to get the approval. So, uh, I guess I'll ask Miss Piper: Are you disputing or contesting anything in this matter? No. Okay. Well, what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll wait and give it about another week and then we'll check in. And if, uh, if we haven't heard anything, we will check in with the front of the court and then maybe, uh, Mr. Wines, it may be that they have, uh, that they will send you an objection if there's anything that they find is missing from the judgment. And then you'll have to make that correction and get it back into them. Uh, so. That's the reason that the matters go to the front of the court is so they can determine that everything that is uh, statutorily required and legally required is contained in the uh, particular final paperwork. So when they have uh, when they have done that, then they will approve it, and then we will be able to enter a judgment and get it completed if, uh, in fact, everything is uh, correct. So, do you have any questions, Mr. Wines? No, Miss Pfeiffer. No, I don't. Okay. Well, we'll give it probably another week and a half or so. And if we haven't heard anything, we will check in with the run of the court. And if necessary, then we will check back and reschedule this matter for a subsequent hearing to determine if we need to resolve any other issues at that point. Okay. okay. Thank you. We'll conclude this matter at 9.01 a.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Mr. Fry, I see that you're moving around. Find a place that you can uh, yep. okay, focus and you can sit down because it's uh, distracting as you're moving around. Sorry, I'm in the food trailer cooking breakfast. Mr. Fry, in this matter, you're before the court charged with uh, civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. You understand the charges? Yes. Court has appointed Mr. Sackrider to represent you in this matter. I know you've had a chance to speak to Mr. Sackrider. Have you had sufficient time to uh, speak to him to prepare and, again, to uh, proceed in this matter? I guess if, if he feels that we are, then I guess, yeah. Okay, I'll ask him. Mr. Sackrider, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. I do. Friday, you can proceed. Thank you. In this matter, Mr. Fry is before Your Honor on a bench warrant. I'm sorry, on a adjourned show cause hearing. Um, this is the first and inform only enforcement action on this docket. Currently, there is no current child support charging in this docket. Um, the parties share 50-50 custody per the order um, based on the two minor children they have left. However, guidelines says he should be paying the arrears on this docket at $746.50 per month. Um, the last order of the court that adjourned this matter before judge from the referee said that he should have paid his order in July, one month of $743. During that month, he only paid $20, leaving him short um, $723. Current arrearage as of today's date is $4,986.63. Um, the last payment was made on August 7th of the $20. He paid that on his own. We show current public assistance for medical benefits, and that is it. No social security or any other benefits. And he has no prior jail sentences for this matter. Okay. Mr. Sackrider, uh, do you contest or dispute any of the statements made by uh, Ms. Platt? No, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for Ms. Vladek? Yes. Does he qualify for the LEAP program? He would. Have what, you discussed that? that with him? I'm sorry? 
Have you discussed the LEAP program with him? Um, nope. He has indicated that he's working doing the food truck. That was his source of income at this time. All right. Would you be willing to adjourn today's hearing uh, to set up that type of program? Um, that would be up to judge today if we do an adjournment or not. All right. Thank you. I have no further questions for Ms. Platt. Okay. Thank you. Any uh, proofs, Mr. Sackrider? I would call Mr. Fry. Okay. Go ahead. All right, Mr. Fry, can you hear me? Yes. You heard the testimony, Ms. Plattick. Was there anything that you disagreed with? Well, the I disagree. I disagree with the whole foundation of where we're even here. But I guess that, that you already told me that's not for the topic of today. I, All right. She testified that you are working. Where are you currently working? Okay. Yeah, that's correct. Yes, I'm working and I'm starting a food truck. I'm at, actually currently at the Calhoun County Fairgrounds as uh, Marshall here um, serving breakfast, lunch and dinner, um, just trying to make this work because working as an electrician was crippling my body. And I'm just trying to do something that isn't going to kill me. So I still have quality of life. And I wish I mean, I really hope that the courts will continue to impute this fictional dollar amount that they say I'm earning when I'm earning five to 10 times that. I mean, because the defendant in this case is living well beyond her means and doesn't need any assistance from me. But I think you said, I guess we need to figure out how to properly file that stuff. I guess. I, I don't know. I attempted to do it. Like I said, that's what brought us all here. Clearly my inability to, go through the channels properly. Okay, um, are you uh, willing to participate in a LEAP program or employment service offered by a friend of the court? No, I mean, I'm putting everything I have into this. I know that this food truck's gonna take off and do great. All my energy is going into this. I'm not only doing this, but I'm doing a Northern Initiatives uh, business class. It's a 10-week class every Tuesday and Thursday um, that just started last week. And lots of good stuff's coming from that. Like, I'm going to come up with, you know, not just they're helping me get my business plan all set, but then they also actually have funding available to help with, since there's like, I mean, it's it's hard starting out a business, but I mean, the, the reward is definitely there. And like I said, the income's going to be, substantially more than the potential of going, you know, being an electrician. Okay. Um, your child support obligation is uh, $743 per month. Were you aware of that? No, I was not aware of that. I thought it was it, like five something is what it was at or set at. I thought back in August. What, uh, what, what was your previous employment? Um, how, what, how far back? What do you, what they, uh, imputed my wages from or what, what employment are you looking for? Yeah. Cause what they imputed your wages from. I was working for union electric and that was, I haven't worked for them since 2021. And I was working for the school after that just as a part-time basis as they needed. I, volu I volunteer up at the school a lot, and then I would also work there. All right, why did you stop working there? At the school? Or at the Union Electric? At Union, Union Electric. Electric. Union Electric, I stopped working there because uh, I had children that were virtual learning. My youngest, that's in this case at that time, she was in just in first grade learning how to read and she had to do everything on the computer and I had them half the time. And so I wasn't able, you know, I unfortunately was laid off because of my inability to work because I had to be home with my children. And then, you know, also at the same time, I was thankfully was able to help get myself through the depression that my wife's, you know, all her actions, cheating and betrayal, it drove me. So anyways, I'm mentally so much a better place. And like I said, I, I coach my kids and I volunteer at the school and work at the school and I'm starting my business and it's all, it's all going good. If I just can stop getting 
sucker punch and stranglehold here and there. All right, so you stopped working because of injuries? I mainly, no, I stopped working to take care of my kids. I had been working part-time because of injuries because of my body. I, I hadn't worked a 40-hour work week since like, we could look back and see. It's probably, I think, 2016 and paperwork. But I've never been one to want something for free. Because everyone, oh, you should just get disabilities. No, I can work. I'm capable of working. So, and I get by I, my bills. I pay my bills, not the fictitious ones. I don't, I'm sorry if you guys, I don't trying to offend anybody, upset anybody, but I'm getting by. I'm paying my bills. I'm fighting through to make better for my family. I mean, I, I feel that me being there for my kids is much better than me working seven days a week, breaking my body, having someone else take care of my kids. So I can put dollars in the bank account. I mean, my kids are going to, they learn better from me than they do from my wallet. All right. What is your plan in the future to pay on the child support obligation? I'd like to see if we could have the courts put what she's to pay me and to arrears or credit her or it'd be great if they could actually look back and see that, you know, this imputing wages really is a stranglehold on him and it's not fair. Or maybe give me a contract that says they'll continue to impute wages for the next, you know, well, we, my youngest is nine. So maybe the next nine years we'll impute these wages and, you know, pretend that you're making this when you're making 10 times more because I'm not making anything compared to what they're saying I am or what they were saying I have been. All right. Are you willing to file a motion to have that amount lowered or changed? It, if I can have some assistance with that, because I tried doing that before and I didn't, I think I filed the wrong paperwork one time and then I, I just didn't have enough evidence. Another, I don't know what they, I don't know what they want from me. I don't, I would love to do whatever I can do to make this right. Yes. But I don't know how to. How much, uh, how much per week could you pay? Probably $20 a week is probably the most I can afford to pay. Right. And then I just, everything is going, uh, scraping into getting this business going. Okay. Um, What's your highest level of education completed? I graduated high school. Okay. Anything else you would like to tell the court? I don't think there's anything else I can say that's going to make a difference. No. All right. Thank you. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Fry, you say you uh, stopped <clears throat> working to, uh, again, to be with the children for virtual learning and uh were you working as an electrician at that time yes <clears throat> yes prior to that i was working like two days one week three days the next it was like a little rotating schedule that they had me with it just it was part-time you're but saying you're, you're able to pay your bills at the current time. What what is your week average weekly income? Right now, I don't I don't have one. I still you're I'm just saying, up. you're saying you're paying your bills, so you must be making money so that you can pay your bills. I'm paying bills off the last reserves of savings that I had, and my parents had kicked me a little bit of of a early inheritance, and I had sold my house last year. I've been living off of living off of that. I'm not, I'm currently not making any money. No, I mean, I don't, everything that I, that the company brings in right now is I'm turned is getting put right back into it, trying to, and there's just so many things that need to be purchased. And I mean, I still don't even have a website. I don't, I'm trying doing all the accounting stuff myself. I don't even have an accounting company on. But no, there's. I'm not making any income yet. I was hoping that this fair should be the first time that I actually get some real profit from the food truck. In the last year, let's say, have you have you applied to get employment any other place where you'd have full time employment? 
No, I have not because I, all my energy I'm putting into getting this restaurant going. Anything else that you'd like to tell me, sir? I'll answer any questions you have, but I'm not sure what else I need to say, what, what I can say. Well, you have, you, you brought up the issue of uh, a prior employment and probably the imputation that they imputed income to you for your being an electrician. Do you have a right at any point to file a petition to seek a modification in of your support obligation, but that's up to you to do that. The court doesn't do it. The court isn't going to initiate that. That's something that you're going to have to do. Well, okay. And okay. I don't want to, I don't want any money from her. And I think if we go and change it now, it's all it's going to do is make cause the current, now the new current order, not the one that we're here for my arrears. She currently is ordered to pay somewhere between 50 and a hundred dollars, I believe. I'm not sure the exact number and less than a hundred, more than 50, somewhere in there that she's to pay me now. And if we were to go and have them remove the imputed amount, it's just going to make her pay me a bunch more. And I'm not, I don't want that. I don't want, I want her to keep her money. I'm not trying to take anything from her. Well, so you have a right at any point that is dollars, if you that, file your petition and it shows that she should be paying you a sum of money, you could always offset that against your arrears as well. So just well, so that's what I would like that. to do. That, yes, that's that's I I asked the, my um, Mr. Sackrider um, about if there was a way that we could do that, and to, and he said that the only way to do would be to get her to agree. Because I said I would like to take what she owes me and just offset that or have that go right to the arrears or credit her or, or however we can do that. You're going to have to state it. You're going to have to file a motion to get that done because the court just doesn't do it because you're asking for it. Do we have to have a motion so she has an opportunity to respond and we'd have a hearing on it? Ms. Brower, uh, anything you would like to tell me? He, <clears throat> excuse me, he is making money. He is paying his employees $20 an hour to help him. Uh, I have had our oldest daughter for almost two years. This is why the child support is enforced. Um, he's never offered a penny towards her. Um, I, I don't know. He, he is clearly not hurting because he's out running 5Ks, kayaking, biking. He's not hurting. He just doesn't want to work. He hasn't um, uh, applied for any employment in years and I know it's to get at me. Anything else, ma'am? No. Thank you. Mr. Sackrider, anything else? You have any questions of Ms. Brown? No, nothing further. Anything else? Well, the court will make the following finding this case that uh, again, Mr. Fry has a uh, supporter rearage uh, approaching uh, $5,000. Uh, apparently he had had an imputation of income as a result of his electrician's job that he left. At that point, he said he left uh, that job to uh, again, work with his children on virtual learning. And uh, at that time stopped working. He has not worked since that time. He stated that in the last year, he's not made any applications for any employment. He's not sought any employment, that he is attempting to work on a food truck, which is a business he is starting to develop. And although that's admirable, he still has the obligation to support his children and is not doing that at the current time. Coral will find that he has not exercised due diligence. Uh, he states that he is paying his bills. He's paying those bills, but he's not paying the current support obligation. So uh, notwithstanding his being well aware of that, because he stated he had attempted to uh, uh, to uh, seek a modification previously, he is not doing anything to attempt to remedy that particular situation. And he is not paying. As a result, the court will find that he has failed to exercise due diligence. He failed to refuse to comply and he is in contempt of court. Mr. Sackrider, anything before sentencing? 
Your Honor, uh, my client has had uh, no previous contempt findings. He testified that he is working and he is willing to make payments on this obligations, but that he needs to um, have the amount lowered uh, so that he is uh, able to make those payments. It's for all those reasons that we would ask that uh, any sentence be suspended um, or that any uh, the purge amount be set uh, in a, an amount of $200 uh, so that he can uh, stay out of jail, uh, begin to pay on this obligation and continue to earn a wage. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Well, in this uh, matter, the court uh, notes that uh, the request of Mr. Sackrider, basically that uh, again, that his, uh, the, the not would be a nominal amount that he basically would not uh, uh, again, have any incarceration, but the court doesn't believe that that is appropriate as he is effectively not doing anything in the payment of this matter. And as a result, the court does believe that uh, some incarceration is appropriate. Uh, the court is going to sentence him to 14 days in jail with credit for no time served. The court would allow him to purge himself of contempt by paying the sum of $500. If you pay that amount, then you would not have to serve the, uh, the jail time. The court will, in this matter, note that, uh, again, you're looks like you've been working, as you stated, you're at the fair course recognizing that what I'm going to do is give you again this time to I'm going to have you report to the sheriff's office on August 25 2023 no later than four o'clock p.m. to serve your jail time or if you paid the purge amount prior to that time then you would not have to go to jail that will be the order of the court we'll end this matter at uh, the court 11 with, uh, 2 a.m. the court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. You understand the charges? Yes, I understand the charges, but I never got any paperwork on it. Okay. I had even updated my address and everything with the courts, and I never got any paperwork. Okay. Uh, in this matter, uh, you have a right to an attorney if you desire to have an attorney in this matter. Uh, it's my understanding you wish to proceed without an attorney. Is that correct? I mean, I'm not sure how all this works, so I wasn't sure if I needed an attorney or not. Well, that's up to you. You're entitled to have an attorney if you wish to do so, but uh, you're not required to have an attorney. So it's up to you on what you would like to do. Um. I'll go ahead and have an attorney if I can get one appointed to me. Okay. Court will a, appoint an attorney to represent you. The court will adjourn this matter to September 6, 2023 at 8 o'clock a.m. And we will then have, uh, you'll have a chance to speak to the attorney and be represented them. Okay. So you'll have to appear on the September 6th date. You understand that? In person or over Zoom? Over Zoom. Okay, so September 8th at 8 o'clock in the morning? 6th. Okay. September, September 6th. At 8.45. 845. 845. Yep. Okay. And there's the $50 fee for that attorney as well on that day. Okay. Okay. Hey, ma'am, do you understand that? Yes, I do. Okay, we'll see you back on September 6th. Uh, Ms. Right, Ms. Collins is before the court this morning for a bench warrant hearing. She failed to appear on March 14th of 2023 before referee Snyder. Um, she has a zero support order, um, but per guideline, she should be paying $509 per month. Her last payment was July 8th of 2021. That was $235.64 through income withholding with unemployment. She's had two prior contempt findings. She was actually sentenced to serve 30 days in jail in February of 2020. Um, she booked until the Calhoun County Jail on July 17th of 2023. For 12 months of compliance, Ms. Collins should have paid $6,108. She's paid zero. Total arrears through the end of July are $7,993.77. Just so I clarify, because we have issues with regard to the name, what is 
incarcerated Miss Collins to pay her. What is her first name? Robin. Robin. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> Mr. Sackrider, do you uh, dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Brown? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. Do you have any questions for Ms. Brown? Um, has Miss um, Brown been offered the LEAP program? Ms. Brown has not, but neither has Ms. Collins. Or sorry, Ms. Collins. Okay. My apologies. Um, She has been booked in the jail since July 17th of 2023. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Um, all right. I have no further questions. Thank you. Uh, any proof, uh, Mr. Sackrider? Yes, I'd call my client, Ms. Collins. Okay, go ahead, Ms. Uh, Ms. Robin Collins. Yes. Collins, Collins, can you hear me? Yes. All right. You heard the testimony of uh, Miss Brown, the caseworker. Is that correct? Yes. Was there anything that you disagreed with? No. Were you aware of uh, your child support obligation? Yeah, but I didn't know about the next court date. You weren't aware of the uh, show cause hearing on March 14th, 2023? No, I didn't know about the court date, no. Uh, you you never received notice? No. Did your address change? Yes, it did. All right. Did you update the court with your new address? No, I didn't. All right. Uh, you were picked up uh, on July 17th, 2023. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Are you being held on any other criminal matters? Yeah. And uh, what are those? A retail case. Do you have a, a hearing date set for that case? Yeah, I'm actually supposed to go to court today for it. Today? Yes. Okay. Um, before uh, July 17th of 2023, were you employed? I was doing side jobs. I took care of my man. You said side jobs? Yes. And then what did you say after that? I took care of my blind man. A blind man? Yes. At Somerset. At Somerset? Yeah, where is that? Yes. Okay. So you live on Somerset Street? Somerset Avenue. Somerset Avenue with a, a blind man and you take care yes. of him? Yes. Okay. And so you were living on uh, Somerset? Yes. All right. And you were doing uh, other side jobs, you said? Yeah, I do uh, babysit, side yard work and all that stuff. All right. How would how much would you say you were making uh, per week? Depends on the weather. All right. On average, how much would you make? Not much. <laughs> like, uh, can you give an estimate? Uh, about hundred a week. Okay. Uh, did your expenses exceed your income of a hundred dollars per week? Yes, yeah, if I pay for food and help with house supplies. You said food and house supplies? Yeah, I help with house supplies. House. All right. Um, were you applying to jobs? Uh, yes. All right. Uh, approximately per week, how many jobs would you apply to? Uh, six, seven a week online. And, and what? And the one can go in person, but... It's hard to get around on the bus sometimes with no money, so. All right. Were you getting any interviews? Uh, I have an interview set up on July 17th, the day I got arrested at EPI. You had an interview with EPI set on the day you were arrested? Yep. Okay. And if you were released today, would you uh, contact EPI? Yes, I would. All right. Would you continue to apply for jobs? Yes. Okay. Uh, what's your highest level of education? Proper. All right. Do you have a high school diploma? I went to get my GED. Yes, I did. You have a GED? Yes. Okay. Do um, you have any uh, medical issues? Not really, no. Do you go to Summit Point? <laughs> yeah. And are you prescribed medication? 
Yes, I am. What's the medication for? Anxiety and uh, they said PTSD from when I was a little kid. Okay. Nightmares. And so you're currently treating that through yes. some point? Okay. Yes. All right. Anything else you would like to tell the court? No. All right. Thank you. Nothing further, Your Honor. Thank you. Ma'am, you stated that you were working, uh, taking care of another gentleman as well. Uh, were you being paid for that? I was, uh, I was, my pain was how I was staying there for free, staying there. So you weren't being paid, you're just allowed to stay there? Yes. You understand, like, the fact that you uh, had the uh, contempt from the referee hearing in March was because you didn't show to a hearing, but that's because you didn't change your address. How do you anticipate that the front of the court was going to know where you would be if you didn't change your address? I'm not sure. It was my, it was my mistake not updating it. Your last payment in this matter occurred in uh, July of 2021. So it's now been over two years since you've made any payments. How do you and how do you suspect your child was being taken care of if there was no money to pay for the child's care? I, I know it my, 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 my mistake, I know it was. Sorry, ma'am, I didn't get that. I said, no, it was my mistake. I'm not paying child support, I know. It was my mistake. Anything else that you would like me to be aware of? No. Okay. Ms. Lisa Collins, is there anything you'd like me to be aware of? Um, I don't know how they're saying that the kids received money in 21 because in March there was a court hearing. I called friends of the court and said, I cannot get off work that day. I'm a teacher. I work in a classroom. I was long term and I could not get out of my classroom that day to attend a hearing. They said, that's fine. You don't have to attend. At that time, she had not paid in years. She owed over $16,000. Because I didn't show up for that hearing, and evidently she didn't either, they sent me a form to fill out. I had filled out a form before the hearing. They sent me the same exact form. I sent it in and then received a letter saying that she no longer has to pay child support, and they were cutting what she owed in half. Because, number one, I didn't attend the hearing, which I was told by friends of the court I didn't have to, but supposedly they never got my form back, which I did send in because I send in all my forms. So this isn't just since 2021. This has been ongoing. Her original amount she owed in March was over 16000 So Your Honor, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Your Honor, may I speak? After, after your mother does, go ahead, Miss. Or Miss Lisa Collins. So I work two jobs to take care of them. There's three of them. So this isn't just since 2021. I was only mentioning that because that's the last payment. That's all. That's well, the reason that was brought up. Okay. The kids never received anything in 2021. They haven't received anything that I know of in years. Anything else, ma'am, that you would like us to be aware of? Um, at this point, no. Mr. Sackrider, do you have any questions for Ms. Lisa Collins? No, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Robin Collins, uh, you said you had something else to say. What, ma'am? That was me, Your Honor. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wanted the court to be aware that the arrears <laughs> did decrease from $15,000 because Ms. Lisa Collins submitted an application for uh, the arrears forgiveness for the state owed arrears. And those arrears were wiped out in um, November of 2022. I didn't submit any forms for arrears forgiveness. Ra uh, Robin did. Okay. Well, I don't know how that would have happened. Maybe uh, Ms. Brown, maybe you could get back to Ms. Uh, Lisa Collins and uh, provide her with any information because just because it's requested by the payer, I don't know how the uh, arrears would have been forgiven. 
So just your honor, the arrears that were forgiven were owed to the state of Michigan, not to Lisa. Okay, thank you. Anything else, uh, Mr. Sackrider? No, Your Honor. Court will make the following finding in this case that uh, the payer in this matter was well aware of the uh, support obligation in this uh, particular case that she had previously not changed her address. She didn't get notice of a referee hearing, but that is her obligation to uh, make uh, the court aware. All the orders provide that uh, they have to notify the uh, front of the court with, uh, with uh, of, of any change in address. She has stated that she has worked side jobs, uh, various uh, side jobs where she makes on average $100 a week, that her last payment was in July of 2021. And as Miss Lisa Collins stated, prior to that time, she had not paid as well. And uh, as a result, the court will find that uh, she has failed to pay out of available resources. She's failed to refuse to comply and she is in contempt of court. Anything before sentencing, Mr. Sackrider? Yes, Your Honor. I would uh, note that uh, she's been incarcerated uh, since July 17th of this year. Um, we would ask that she be sentenced to time served uh, because she's been in for the month or just under a day um, uh, so that she can uh, be released uh, pursue the opportunity with EPI, uh, have the ability to earn a wage and begin paying on this support obligation. Thank you, Your Honor. Ms. Lisa Collins, did you want to say anything as it relates to sentencing? No. Thank you. Well, the court finds in this matter, obviously, that there's uh, been a long time, a long period of time where support hasn't been paid, that in fact, uh, as Ms. Lisa Collins states, she's working two jobs to be able to support the children. Uh, and it's unfortunate that the uh, payer in this matter isn't as vigilant in working uh, to support the kids. She has had two prior contempts in this matter, which Matt Court is not aware of her having. Uh, she did get a sentence of 30 days previously back in 2020 in February of 2020 that uh, I could uh, Robin Collins I could send you up to 90 days in jail I'm not going to do that uh, but obviously these matters as you see as it progresses you do uh, uh, get additional time uh, as you continue to have violations. What the court is gonna do is the court is gonna sentence you to 30 days in jail with credit for, excuse me, 60 days in jail with credit for 30 days serve. The court will allow you to purge yourself of contempt by paying the sum of $500. If you're able to purge yourself, then you would not send the, spend the remaining 30 days or otherwise you will. That will be the order of the court. We'll end this matter at uh, 1131. AM, you're free to go. Have a good day. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Okay. Well, Mr. Young, I see you're moving around. Please find a place where you can uh, sit down and get a good connection because it is, uh, again, uh, annoying and, uh, again, yep, that's what I'm doing moving right around. Now, yeah, that's what I'm doing. Mr. Young, in this matter, you're charged with a civil civil contempt of court for failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. You understand the charges? Yes. Court has appointed Mr. Sackrider to represent you in this matter. Have you had sufficient opportunity to speak to Mr. Sackrider in preparation for this proceeding? Yes, sir. And Mr. Sackrider, are you ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Ms. Brown, you can go ahead. Respondent is Gil Young the third. Mr. Young is before the court for an adjourned show cause hearing. He has a monthly obligation of $217.50. That's $164 for current support, $54 toward arrears, and $3.50 for fees. His last payment was February 10th of 2023. That was $57.36 through income withholding. 
He's had four show causes, three bench warrants, but zero prior contempt findings. For three months of compliance, Mr. Young should have paid $652.50. He's paid nothing. Total arrears through the end of July, $6,322.28. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Sackrider, uh, do you dispute or contest any of the statements made by Ms. Brown? Uh, no, Your Honor. Do you have any questions for Ms. Brown? Yes. Have you offered the LEAP program uh, to Mr. Young? I just looked. I did not. Um, on July 26, Mr. Young told me that he refused, he will not pay child support, so I did not refer him to LEAP. All right. Thank you. No further questions. Any uh, proofs, Mr. Sackrider? Yeah, I call Mr. Young. Go ahead. All right, Mr. Young, can you hear me? Yes. All right, you heard the testimony of Ms. Brown, the caseworker. Did you disagree with anything that she said? Um, so I don't think it was a matter of me just blatantly saying I will not pay child support. It was more of a matter that I want to resolve the child support issue as me. Me and Ms. Bracky have both stressed to the front of the court that we want to opt out. Um, we've had hired paid attorneys that tried to um, file the paperwork to opt out and they refused that paperwork. Um, share 50-50 custody with the kids. Um, we both receive assistance from the state. Um, so it was a matter of trying to get at least the right steps taken to, you know, get front of the court out of, you know, the equation. Um, I know Ms. Bracky has, in the past has forgiven uh, Rearages, and you know, to my knowledge, she would continue to be willing to do that. Um, so it was just a matter of getting the child support issue resolved altogether. Um, so I didn't, you know, I wanted to get that taken care of. All right, what is your uh, custody arrangement with Miss Bracky? Um, we have 50 50 custody. Okay, how often, or how many children do you have, Miss Bracky? Three. Three, and how often do you have the three children? Um, well, what's ordered is week on week off, but we kind of just do what works. Um, sometimes we stay in the same home. Sometimes the kids stay with me. Sometimes I stay with her. Um, so, I mean, I would 50, 50 plus time we're together all in the same home as well. All right. You said you tried to opt out of the child support. Uh, what happened that you did not opt out? I, to my knowledge, the friend of the court refused that they said we couldn't opt out because of like state assistance or something, but we both get assistance, you know, all, all members of the family get assistance. So. Okay. Um, it says your last payment was in February of 2023 through income withholding. Where were you working then? Um, I can't remember the name of the factory. Um, it was a factory out in Vicksburg. I just can't remember the name off the top of my head right now. Okay, um, how have you been supporting yourself since February of this year? Um, not, not very well, to be honest. I've kind of been struggling, um, trying to get side jobs. I had a business that I tried to launch that kind of, you know, just never took off. So I've still been trying to work with that. Um, you know, just been barely getting by, really. Why did your employment end in February of 2023? What was that? Why did your employment end in February of this year? Um, so I, in the starting of launching my business, um, like almost two years ago, around that time, I fell and injured myself. Uh, my left arm was pretty bad. Um, that job was just too much for me physically with the extent of my injury to my left arm. I just wasn't physically able to keep doing that job every day, which has been kind of the struggle of, you know, maintaining employment that kind of works for me since, um, all right. So have you been incarcerated since February of this year? Uh, yes, I have. When was that? Um, I don't remember. It was um, either May or June, I believe, um, which was brings me to another point that I wanted to bring up when you asked the question, if I disagreed with uh, any of, I believe it was Ms. Brown's testimony, um, that uh, I have paid since February because I was incarcerated, um, like I was going to say, in May or June, that was for a front of the court warrant, um, which the bond was paid and I, the bond was forfeited to front of the courts. Um, I don't remember the dollar amount or the exact date of that arrest. 
And that was in May or June of this year? Correct. Okay. Um, and you, how long did you spend in jail? Um, it was like a weekend, if, if, if I remember right. I, I, I know I had to wait to go to the court on Monday, so I, don't, I just don't remember if it was a Friday or Saturday that I was arrested. Okay. Um, are you willing to take the steps to have the arrears forgiven or change the child support order? That's a lot of the issue has just been trying to be pointed in the right direction or find the right steps. Um, when I, you know, I don't know exactly what steps to take to get that done. Okay, you said you had an attorney before. Are you willing to reach out to an attorney or the court to figure out those steps? Um, I mean, yeah. Just as far okay. as, like, you know, money has obviously been an issue, like we spoke about, you know, a few ago, so I'm not sure if I'd be able to afford an attorney and or if any of those steps, like, are going to take, like, filing motions that will cost money or anything like that. I just may struggle to do that right now. All right. Anything else you'd like to tell the court? Um, no, just that I'm willing to, you know, resolve the issues. It's it wasn't a matter of just trying to ignore it. You know, it's I just don't know what steps to take and, um, you know, paying child support. Like I said, we both wanted to opt out of that. And, you know, it's just been an issue. And all right, thank yeah. you. No further questions. Okay. Mr. Young, just to clarify for you, as you go forward. Uh, in this matter, because you're both on public assistance, the court will not allow you to opt out of paying support through the front of the court. So you can still file your motion for modification and seek a modification in custody or support or anything, but the court will not allow you to opt out when there is, uh, again, public assistance involved. Okay, yeah, and that is essentially what my attorney um, did say. So, I mean, I guess yeah. I would like to file the motion then to to at least get the support uh, yeah, modified. Your, your, your attorney gave you the accurate advice uh, at that time. Uh, what is the uh, what is your education background, sir? Um, I have uh, some college. You said that uh, you were had a, your own business for approximately. You said you launched it about two years ago. And uh, uh, presumably you've continued in that business for some period of time. Is that accurate? Uh, yes, um, that's, well, it was a little over two years ago that we started the business. And then it was around two years ago that I had the injury at work where I broke both my arms, uh, the left one pretty bad in seven different spots, arm, wrist, and hand. So did you then stop operating the business at that point? Um, we tried to continue doing it because I did have a couple workers and it just between mm -hmm. the workers not working out and, you know, jobs just not coming in and, um, with the extent of my injury. You know, I, I wasn't really able to put in the work myself. You said you worked at a factory that you ended sometime on February 10th of 2023. Well, that would be the last payment. How long did you work at that factory? Um about six weeks. I, I started the first of the year, uh, roughly, and then I, I toughed it out as long as I could. It just came to a point that I couldn't physically do the labor. Have you done anything and looked at any other employment since you eliminated that or you stopped, you, you quit from that factory job? Um, nothing as far as on the books. Um, I have tried to seek out different um, like avenues or professions that aren't so physical, but without me really having a background in it, I've kind of struggled. Um, and then I've tried to continue getting any side jobs that, you know, I could at least tough through to, you know, at least make ends meet. But, you okay. know, that's... On the side jobs you had, how much did you say you would average on a weekly basis make from the side jobs? Um, I mean, it would it would depend, but I'd, I'd say, you know, on average, I'd be lucky, lucky to make a couple hundred bucks a week, you know, just to put food on the table or whatever, gas in the tank, things like that. Anything else that you'd like me to be aware of, sir? Um, just that I am, you know, a full-time father. Uh, you know, I'm just doing what I can to make ends meet. And, you know, I, I understand and respect the front of the court and all that. Um, 
but it's just also kind of an inconvenience that, you know, having to, you know, the threat of going to jail or whatever for not paying, you know, you know, trying to take care of my kids on a daily basis. Uh, Ms. Fracky, is there anything you'd like me to be aware of? Mm, no, nope. um, he pretty much covered it. Um, it's court ordered. We have our kids week on, week off. And right now I have my own home and he's um, staying with his parents. So he's in my home a lot visiting and staying with the kids because I, you know, don't want him missing out on his time with his children. He's really close with his children. So I wouldn't want him to go to jail because, you know, that would affect my children. Thank you. Well, Carl will make the following finding in this matter that Mr. Young has testified that he had a factory job for approximately six weeks uh, in Vicksburg. He uh, said that it was too much for his arm. He had an, an arm injury previously. And uh, he states that since leaving that employment, he uh, said he's done nothing on the books. So the court takes that as he's done nothing uh, formally, but he has worked side jobs that he claims that he makes on average about $200, sufficient to uh, pay some of household expenses, et cetera, that he has talked about uh, filing action to modify his support obligation. He's not done that as of yet. Uh, I think he said he attempted to do that or attempted to opt out, but was not able to because of public consistence involved. That uh, that uh, he has uh, simply, it looks like he's well aware of the support obligation in this matter because there had been some uh, support forgiveness previously. And, uh, but he's simply at this point, the court doesn't take the, the fact that he's done nothing other works odd jobs since leaving the uh, factory work back in February of 2023. It, obviously he's not made uh, any uh, reasonable or sufficient attempt at employment. The court will find that he has failed or refused to comply and notwithstanding it having the ability to do so uh, in this matter and that he is in contempt of court. Um, Ms. Brown, you say previously there were no, no, uh, no contempt of court? Correct, this is his first contempt finding. Okay. Anything before sentencing, Mr. Sackrider? Uh, yes, Your Honor, uh, as the, was just stated, he has no prior contempt findings. We would ask that uh, an alternative to a jail sentence uh, be ordered, such as LEAP program. Uh, given the circumstances in this case, uh, Mr. Young testified that uh, he shares custody uh, with the plaintiff in this case, um, and that he has uh, his children uh, half the year. Um, incarcerating him uh, would cause a hardship on this family. Um, he did testify that he was employed until February of this year. Uh, he was incarcerated in May, uh, that he did post a bond, and he's willing to have that bond. Uh, uh, should have gone towards uh, the arrears. Um, but um, we would ask that uh, the jail not impose, uh, or sorry, the court not impose a jail sentence, and that Mr. Young uh, be allowed to uh, gain employment and begin paying on this obligation while he gets the orders changed. Thank you. Thank you. Well, what the court's going to do in this matter is I, I understand and the parties have worked well together, which is which is great. But the fact is, he still has that support obligation to pay. He has to comply with that. He's not done so, as I've already found. What the court is going to do is the court is going to, uh, I could sentence you, Mr. Young, up to 45 days in jail. I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sentence you to seven days in jail with credit for no time served. The court will order that you report to the sheriff's department no later than August 18, 2023 at four o'clock PM. And, uh, but the court will allow you to purge yourself of contempt by paying the sum of $500. So if you pay the $500, you would not need to serve the uh, jail term in this uh, particular matter. That will be the uh, order of the court. The court will end this matter yes, at 1151 PM. You're free to go. Have a good day. Mr. Sterling, in this matter, you're before the court charged with a civil contempt of court due to your failure to pay child support and or related expenses. Upon a first conviction, you could be ordered to serve up to 45 days in jail. If it's a second or subsequent offense, up to 90 days in jail. Do you understand the charges, sir? Yes, sir. Court would advise in this matter, the court has appointed Mr. Sackrider to represent you. Have you had sufficient opportunity to talk to Mr. Sackrider in preparation for this case? Yes, sir. And Mr. Sackrider, are you ready to proceed? As yes, the respondent is Jeffrey Sterling. Mr. Sterling is before the court, court for an adjourned show cause hearing before your honor. He has a monthly obligation of $600.50. His last payment was May 21st of this year. It was $22.20. That was through income withholding. 
He's had one show cause, one bench, bench warrant, and no prior contempt findings. For two months of compliance, Mr. Sterling should have paid $1,201. He's paid nothing. Total arrears through the end of July are $18,275.71. Mr. Sterling was referred to LEAP. He was ordered into LEAP. He failed to attend orientation as ordered. Uh, we did, in front of the court, did issue an income withholding on August 10th. I am speaking to Ms. Sterling this, Mr. Sterling this morning. He informed me that he is not employed um, at that employer that we issued the income withholding to. Mr. Sackrider, do you uh, contest or dispute any of the statements made by Ms. Brown? No, Your Honor. Any proofs? Uh, yes, I'd call uh, Mr. Sterling. Go ahead. All right, Mr. Sterling, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right, you heard the testimony of Ms. Brown. Was there anything that you disagreed with? Um, far as on me uh, with the last, because when I came home from prison, I was working back in 2022. And, uh, and I was I was actually making payments of one hundred and fifty to one hundred and forty one dollars. And I actually have screenshots in my phone from my uh, ADP app. And um, I was working at the Marathon for a second. I was working at Melling Aluminum Cash Refoundries and also the Marathon's gas station. So the only time I really haven't paid child support is just this past two months because I've been unemployed. OK, but before that, you were making regular payments. Yes, sir. I was making regular payments, sir. And uh, I talked to my like my, me and my kid's mother have a good relationship. And uh, she lets me know every time she was getting the payment. All right. When when did you get out of prison? I got out of prison June twenty eighth last year, two thousand twenty two. All right. And then where where were you employed after that? Uh, I started working at the Melling Aluminum Casters Foundry uh, for uh, pouring metal. I was a metal pourer, and I used to work pouring mold machines to form car parts. And then after that, I was working at Snackworks, and then I became employed at Burger King. So I had multiple jobs since I've been home. This is the only time I haven't been employed. All right. Uh, you said uh, the past two months you've been employed as unemployed. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Where were you working at? Uh... When I first moved to Indiana, I started out at Arby's. But due to my cases and everything, you know, uh, they, they, uh, they uh, I actually left the job. And then I started working at Dairy Queen. But due to my transportation issues, I couldn't maintain a job because of my transportation issues. So currently I just left. Like when I was talking to you earlier, I was I left the job fair to see if I can find a good job with, within my region. So I had to leave because, you know, this is more important because I didn't want to miss this hearing and get a warrant for missing this hearing. So I left the building and went outside. And uh, like I say, the case that I have right now is kind of hindering me from getting a decent job. All right. When you say case, uh, what case are you referring to? My case is the CSC case that I have, third, uh, fourth degree. All right. Is that a felony? Yes, sir. All right. So that's uh, preventing you from some employment? Some employment because some employments, you know, I guess they don't They have like a, a certain policy to where they can't hire you know people with my qualifications bar based off my criminal record okay all right since uh uh two months ago approximately how many applications would you say you fill out a week oh i want to say about three or four i even got i even got 20 applications saved on my nd just in the past two months <laughs> all right and do you do any applications in person as well well actually nowadays you don't they don't really prefer you like a paper application the last paper application i did it was for a, a convenience store. And um, the lady said it was like two or three people that she had already before me. So I'm just waiting on that to give me a call back. That's literally like a seven minute walk from where I'm currently staying. Okay. Um, how have you been supporting yourself the past two months? Uh, I just go around, honestly. Um, some people let me cut their grass. Some even let me do the yard work. You know, I just met this guy not too long ago. He has his own uh, landscaping business and he just let me come work with him from time to time. Okay. Um, what is your plan for paying on the obligation in the future? Um, honestly, I was just wondering if the judge can just allow me to do a payment plan because, like I said, this is really the only time I have I have not been consistent with my child support. Like I said, uh, I, I agree with the terms and conditions and stimulations as far as on the payment with child support right now. It's just that I don't have a job, so I'm trying my hardest. So if it's cool, like the little money that I do make, like far as on landscaping and things like that, if I can just like electronically put it on the card and, and maybe do a, a payment through a, a card or something like that. Okay. What is your highest level of education? Uh, 11th grade. All right. Are you willing to work on your GED? Yep. 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 I, uh, actually, like, <clears throat> like I told you, I obtained the last GED. So as far as on schooling, I'm, I'm really thinking about either CDLs or just going to school for culinary. All right, where are you at in the process to obtain your GED? Uh, right now, uh, like I say, the last 
<clears throat> the last time I took the test was my math test. So like I said, I haven't gotten my certificate for the last tests that I took. So by me in Indiana now, I'm probably have to do the last test over because they probably have a different format. So just basically just one test. Okay. Um, any, um, any substance abuse issues? No, sir. All right. And um, you just got off uh, parole, is that correct? Yes, sir, I did. Okay. Man, All right, anything fine. else that you would like to tell the court? Um, yes, uh, I do apologize for these last two months. Like I say, it wasn't intentional at all. It was never intentional. It's just I switched to a different state for me and my children to live a better life. And things is not working out as hard as, I mean, as, as easy as I thought it was. And I apologize for not going to the leap orientation. I just thought maybe I can do it on my own. But obviously that wasn't the case. So it's a little harder than what I thought it would be. You know, I'm off parole. I'm doing good. I haven't been in no trouble. So I, like I said, I just wanted the court to just show mercy and just give me another opportunity. It's only been two months. I understand it's, it's, that two months is too long. Just give me opportunity to get on my feet so I can pay my child support. Okay. All right. Thank you. No further questions. Mr. Sterling, uh, you're, you're, are you living in the Indiana? Is that what you said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, uh, sir, uh, I'm not trying to interrupt you. I'm trying to hurry up and get to my to my uh, fiance's job and see if anybody has a charge. My phone literally has two percent, so I can still hear you. That's fine. Okay. Uh, you've worked odd jobs. How? Uh, well, let me ask Miss Brown this. Miss Brown, uh, he stated that up until these two months that uh, he was pretty consistent on payment. Is that accurate? No, Your Honor, it's not. So he, his last payment was in May of 2023. Before that, he made a payment in March of 2023. He paid $45.28 in January and 90, no, $100 in December of 2022. Um, so he's had some sporadic payments. Not <coughs> his, his, the only month that he met his full monthly obligation was in March. Thank you. You heard that, Mr. Sterling? So she stated you haven't paid consistently, that you've been sporadic some months making one payment of obviously less than the amount that's owed per month. What do you, what, how, what's your response? My response is, sir, I actually, my kid's mother actually has those payments and I actually have the payments on my ADP app as far as on my uh, payroll deductions. And I was getting paid weekly and every week I was getting something taken out my check and it was saying legal or on the side, it'll say legal. And then it'll have a CS next to it, which is for child support. So as far as on the sporadic payments. And then, like I say, I was just working at Burger King. And I was getting, because every every check, that, every job that I had to report to, I had to use a withheld document. And they had my routing number to my check numbers and my card numbers. And the child support was taking checks, money out my check before I even seen them. And my, my, I have my kid's mother can confirm that to you, uh, Your Honor. I'm not disputing what Mrs. The, the lady is saying. I just know that I have also, I have proof that I have been consistent with all up until now with my child support. Well, what you're going to have to, if that's the case, and there's a problem with, uh, the records, you're going to have to bring the uh, documentation and provide it to the front of the court or have the uh, mother of the children where she will acknowledge that she's received the monies and get that, uh, again, get an arrearage forgiveness as to those particular amounts. But that's going to be your obligation, sir. You're going to have to do that. Yes, sir. Mr. Sterling, what I'm going to do in this matter is I'm going to uh, give you some additional time. Uh, what I'm going to do is obviously you've stated uh, that uh, you have some intent to, that you've got this potential job interview, et cetera, and it may or not be accurate. I'm, I'm not really satisfied with your explanation as to the amount that you paid over, let's say, the last year or so, but I'm going to give you a couple more months. We're going to adjourn this matter to October 18, 2023 at, are you 8, 845, Ms. Brown? This, it's an S caseload, so it's 8, 8, 8 a.m. Okay. At 8 o'clock, you'll have to appear on that date. We'll see what you've done in the next two months. If you've done nothing and you're not paying consistently, then I will inform you, you better be prepared that you might go to jail. You understand? Yes, sir, I do. Okay, but I'm going to give you a couple months to try to uh, to get employment and start paying regular, get things taken care of with the mother where she can come in and say, okay, he's paid me. You forgive a rearage, and then uh, we'll see what happens. But you have to be here on October 18, 2023, and we'll see what you've done between now and then. Yes, sir. Okay. 
Thank you. We'll end this matter at uh, 12.06 p.m. You're free to go. Have a good day. Thank you. That's all I have, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. You have thank a good you. day, Ms. Brown. You too. Take Mr. care. Mr. Sackrider, thank you for your service. And you